This is a book review of The Avengers West Coast Epic Collection, Volume 4, Vision Quest. There were some great titles. This one is by John Byrne, Steve Englehart, and Milgram. And of course, other people as well. And it's, like I said, Volume 4, 1988 to 1989, and covers the period material West Coast Avengers 38 to 46, Annual Number 3, Avengers West Coast 47 to 52, Annual number four, and material from Avengers Spotlight 23. And the book contains about 490 odd pages, obviously predominantly all the way through colour. And what has it got? It's also got a reasonable selection of bonus material at the back. So uh, just going to quickly run through the book, obviously from Marvel Comics. And uh, well, before I go any further, just quickly show the good old, I always love to show, quickly show this section. I love the list now. It's getting longer and longer, which is great, of course. But I think they just have to write smaller and smaller each time. And of course, there's all the uh, various people involved in the project in this book. So, run through the book now. This is a book of two halves. I see the first hundred pages are Milgram and Engelhart, Steve Engelhart. And I mean, they're fine. Absolute and Jerry Tallock was the finisher there. They're actually okay stories. Well, some are pretty awful, actually, but there's some are quite okay. Now, you've got here the first one. It's an annual. And this is the High Evolutionary. I was not particularly convinced by this story, I have to say. it was, uh, but, it, but it introduces uh, well, some interesting uh, bits and pieces into the story. You've got Kazar turns up. And as well as, obviously, Moon Knight, you've got uh, a number of other characters. Black, Gal Black Goliath or Giant Man or whatever you want to, car want to call him. And because before that, he's actually, uh, apparently he's got some problems. He I can't use the, uh, let's see, his growth serum. Because uh, this happened quite a lot. So I don't know why they ever introduced this. I always felt that really just let them grow or get smaller or whatever. But there was always a complication. Oh, I can't do it. Can't do this. Can't do that. I was slightly, that was a problem with Goliath as well. That just bugged me. But you got uh, the high evolutionary. Giant man again. Anyway. Once that uh, storyline, you've got uh, got these quite interesting little posters and things. They don't really do these sort of like, well, maybe they do, I don't know. I haven't seen so many recently. These Marvel Masterwork uh, sort of pinups that they would used to do in the, in the 60s. So clearly a sort of uh, Tiger there and Vision and Scarlet Witch, etc. Mantis, Moon Knight, you've got some nice ones there. And then you go on to this story, which I have to say was a complete non-story. The Defiler, this character here, Redemption. Totally rubbish story as far as I know. So I'll quickly go over that one. Then into the next story. We got the Phantom Rider or Phantom Ghost character here. And I have to say it was just not oh um, the Ghost Rider character back in the 1960s. It was and I assume that that's the character. So you've got him there. And also you've got obviously still Mockingbird and you've still got uh, Moon Knight. And that story goes into the next one, which is where well, you've got Mantis as sort of solving a little bit of an issue that's been obviously with Mantis and Swordsman. So you've got that solved. Then Night Shift. Just go there. And you've got the characters called Night Shift. And I'm not really certainly certain if they ever turned up again or if it was a sort of just a one-off team of, of characters. They were interesting. You had sort of like a werewolf character there. You had some interesting other characters. And but anyway, I'm not certain if they were mega success. Then on to the next story, and uh, once they finish those characters off, you go on to West Coast Avengers, and this is issue 41, When Ghosts Can Die, Even Gods Must Fear. What a title. Anyway, you got to... Now, I was, when I first saw this, I thought, oh, great. I love Sif as a character, one of my favourite characters, Sif. I thought, oh, she's going to turn up in this, and it's going it's to be good. However, not really. Don't, just That's it. So sets my heart. I think, oh yes, great. Then straight on to story. Doesn't have Sif at all. The rest of the story. You've still got uh, you've got this uh, set, the various people's set, and you've got the Ghost Rider or Phantom Rider or whatever. And just well, the story was sort of obviously resolved a few issues that obviously have been uh, in obviously development over a period of time. So they were rounded up. But then finally, for me, like I said, that was the thing about this book, definitely split into two. You've got the, uh, the next one. One of our androids is missing. Now, this is when John Byrne took over. And as far as I'm concerned, this is really, really excellent art from John Byrne. Love John Byrne's work. Though 
up and down occasionally. Sometimes I love him. Sometimes I think mm, not so keen on. Depends on the inking. And the inking here, um, just here, Michael Macklin. I really, really, really like that. That was really good. And you've got a lovely development here with uh, Tigra. Some sort of, she's got this uh, very surreal at times. You've got her obviously having some dreams and then it sort of becomes, and there's one bit where she's suddenly, it's really quite odd. And also the story, there's Vision Quest. You've got this Vision Quest, obviously the title is called Vision Quest. So you've got the storyline with, to rescue the vision. You've got the characters. Now at least the team sort of settled down for a bit. The, Previous books, the previous stories, I just thought they were all over the place in terms of the characters that were in this. Now, it sort of felt like a, it was a good story, and it was a strong story all the way through. Basically, from page 150, I felt that there were actually no Duff stories at all in this. So, lovely bit of Hawkeye there, I love that. Now, you've got Vision. Uh, Vision has some problems in this, and there's a lot of storyline with, of course, with the, uh, the Golden Age characters. And now, I'm not going to say any spoiling, of course, Anyone, and it does actually sound back about the Golden Age legend, blazes his way back from the grave. Um, so you can probably guess which character that is without actually going any further. So uh, it's, and of course, the vision has always been connected with that Golden Age character. So it's, it was quite nice that they resolved that. They sort of explained some of the things that were quite often what happens in these books, I think, is that various writers say blah, 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 blah. And then, of course, the writers come along later. And they think, well, actually, that contradicts something that was said there. So they have to then tweak it and then re rearrange things, and you end up with a sort of another sort of sort of conclusion to that storyline, which was quite nicely done, actually. There's also a story here with uh, Scarlet Witch and her children that was quite interesting as well. She gets quite angry with uh, quite a few of the characters. She there's a lot of anger in this, and well, Thomas and William. She's got, she's got her kids there. And now there's also an issue, of course, with Vision and Scarlet Witch and with Wonder Man, because obviously Wonder Man's got the imprint of uh, the various the brain, obviously, of Vision was here, yeah, Wonder Man, obviously Williams, Simon Williams. And it's got some nice little flashbacks in this as well to the various characters, obviously the good old days of Zemo and uh, in his old costume there. Really, really good. Now you've got that storyline, and you've got Vision actually become, there's a quite a, like a near enough, a solo, a lovely solo story. It was really just sort of tucked in, the, but it's actually got fun, the fun bits. The Avengers spotlight, the Vision goes Hollywood, which gives a slightly wrong impression, I think, of the story, but it's still a, quite a fun, it's just a good, good story. Now you can see the Vision's got slightly different from the Vision that uh, I'm certainly more familiar with, obviously the green Vision. We've also got this set of new other characters that came into this. Now, the Great Lakes Avengers Assemble. What a mouthful that is. So you've got the Great Lakes Avengers. And there's one point where he turns around and says, shouldn't that have been called the Midwest? So, but I don't know if there's like the British Avengers and they should have like the Korean Avengers, the African Avengers. They could have just gone for the whole, everyone becomes, just got some great characters. Mr. Mister I or something, he's an immortal character. Now, I have to say, I haven't followed any more stories. I assume that they've had more comics than, than that, but I haven't read any. The artwork is superb, and there's a really good storyline with uh, old Mockingbird. I love Mockingbird character. Got the uh, early stories of Mockingbird when she was uh, with Kazar. Love those stories. And also the Mockingbird stories, obviously, with Hawkeye. And then, of course, there's also, in the 90s, there was, obviously, sadly, the story where Mockingbird is... But I did enjoy the Mockingbird character also on the uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. TV series. Now you've got uh, Wasp there. You've got, obviously, there's quite a bit of storyline with Scarlet Witch in this. And also you've got this uh, US agent as well who turns up. He's sort of like Captain America. And he's, uh, let's see if I can see a picture of him. But he's, he's a bit of a, he's been foisted onto the team by the government. So he's uh, a bit, uh, makes him slightly unhappy. But I, I think they sort of, there's certain parts of it that may be slightly warm to him. I don't know. Maybe later on they get rid of him. I have no idea what happens to the US agent at the point. You've also got a little bit of storyline of uh, some time elements and background that's going along. She-Hulk's in the story as well. I love She-Hulk. She-Hulk's a great character. So you've got Captain America and She-Hulk as they go and investigate the characters in the uh, story with uh, the Vision. And that's quite good. And this sort of development, what happens, they all get... However, and again, on to the bit where, of course, the Golden Age legend 
returns. And that's because a gr great opportunity for some great flashbacks with some of the characters like Submariner, etc. Of course, was it part of the Avengers by this time? Also, you've got uh, really throwing the kitchen sink in this. Lots of characters are turning up at this point. So, uh, but it seems at least a coherent story, whereas I felt that the start of the book wasn't. You've got, obviously, Iron Man turns up. So you've got, there's old Iron Man there. So uh, this one's Sing, Sing of Arms and Heroes. So you've got uh, quite a dramatic shot there, going bursting through Avengers West Coast. And the story was quite interesting because it actually develops a story with uh, good old uh, Mephisto as well as... Uh, Harkness, as well as uh, Scarlet Witch again. That's that's a real good story and brilliant artwork as well from uh, all the way through that. Good old, uh, there's the old Harkness there turning up. Love that. Agatha Harkness. Good old Agatha Harkness. Now, of course, most of the time I always remember more with uh, the Fantastic Four, but of course she has quite a bit of a see, development with uh, Scarlet Witch. I don't want to show that page in any shape or form because that tells more of the story. And then you've got, and well, after all that, goes all the way through to the end, and you've got, uh, which is quite dramatic, the, I don't show that bit either. Now you've got the Atlantis attacks, the final bit. I have to say that story didn't really do, even though, of course, the artwork is absolutely superb. It's a John Byrne still, but it just didn't do so much for me as a storyline, I must admit. And, well, trouble is, of course, it's to be continued. Uh, to be continued in the mighty Thor, as it says there. So, so reading it all the way, you think, oh, this is just a single story. Well, I knew it wasn't going to be a single story because the, it was obviously an event, one of those events. And that's the trouble. And I actually went and looked for find uh, the Atlantis attacks, see if there was uh, like a complete collection or something. There is an omnibus. Uh, unfortunately, of course, it's now becoming out of, it's out of print. And, of course, that means insane prices, as usual. So uh, there's that story. And then finish off, I actually had some nice little extras at the end. And I'm, well, it's, I suppose they're not really extras, but uh, there was this love, well, I suppose it was, uh, this bit. They uh, sort of going through all the various hunks of the Avengers, various hunkiness of these characters. So you've got whether, you know, gives him a seven, gives him 10 for Hercules, etc. Captain America, obviously Quicksilver. Most people, Quicksilver is one of those really annoying characters. I actually really liked Quicksilver in the very early days. But it's after a while you just think, no, he's just an annoying character. You've got Submariner, all the, you've got Star Fox, you've got Wonder Man. And of course, I must admit, I didn't like him either. And I actually turned around and mentioned about that he should be back wearing his shades. I always, it always bugged me, the, the glowing red eyes. I don't know why they did that. I think it should have been better just maybe giving him a sort of visor like, uh, you know, you've got their picture of him there talking, discussing it. Maybe like Cyclops or something. Just, it just, no, wouldn't be very good. Imagine sort of dealing with, I remember there was a brilliant one with, uh, there was, uh, where they were doing poker. And I remember one where the thing would turn around and say to uh, characters, I don't like uh, Wonder Man wearing uh, these shades. And, you, and, he, and he then takes it off and it, <laughs> Yeah, maybe it's a good idea you keep them on, because I can't blame them. It would be a bit sort of... Ooh. Anyway, you've got the story of the US Asian. You've got an interesting little story. There's actually some nice... Now, I must admit, I didn't know anything about this character. I don't know what happened to him later on. I'm... But after reading this, and this is volume four of the uh, epic uh, uh, West Coast, I think I will begin volume five. I don't know if the stories are any good. It's one of those things that... Uh... But I haven't bought any of the West Coast before. West Coast Avengers completely. I've always just grown up on the Avengers as few things. So that's why I don't even know about the Great Lakes. Were well, there some stories about them? I suppose there must have been. But um, I have to check that out. But it's got some nice little uh, stories here. And this one's quite nice as well. They've actually got another little one here. This is Firebird. Another character I just, must admit had no knowledge of whatsoever. So Firebird. And then on to the last one, which is a sort of... Uh, well, Saga of the Serpent Crown, Chapter 12. Obviously put everything in this. You've got a bit of a storyline, obviously, of the uh, Squadron Supreme and all that sort of stuff. Now, what you've got in the back, you've got Marvel Age. You've got some bonus material. You've got some lovely uh, on these sort of pages there, profile art. And then you finish it off with the Vision Quest. There, yeah, apparently there was a separate book called Vision Quest. And then, of course, another listing of all these books. And I love looking at these. It's always quite good. I'm always looking at this like Silver Surfer. 
I got volume one and volume three. I always keep thinking one day volume two will be pop, popped into there. And of course, Sergeant Fury is still only one there. would love to see a volume two. Venom seems to be only one at the moment still for that. And you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for the X-Men. Uh, obviously, uh, hopefully looking forward to a volume eight at some point. Looking forward to the Incredible Hulk. That's the next one that's coming. The uh, Who Will Judge the Hulk, Volume 5. Thoroughly enjoyed Going Grey, Volume four, 14. There's quite a gap in between those. So uh, so what a brilliant collection this is. This is So I'm just going to read the back. It's got uh, like the Night Shift. Uh, Mockingbird is haunted by a terrible sector, spectre of the Phantom Rider. I certainly that was the Ghost Rider. Maybe I'm confusing the characters, but to me, he was Ghost Rider. Obviously, they had to change his name because it, maybe it's too confusing with the Ghost Rider that we're more familiar with. There's also uh, the uh, transformation of the Vision, and the Vision's wife, obviously Scarlet Witch, descends into darkness, and you can see that at the back there, where she's obviously just going to zap. Obviously, for some weird reason, She-Hulk is going off that direction. Not so white pointing that way, but anyway, slightly confusing that bit of artwork there. US agent muscles his way into the roster and the Great Lake Avengers assembly. That's one I must check out and see if there's some more Great Lake stories. Maybe there'll be a Great Lakes epic collection, who knows, or complete. Anyway, so that's Avengers West Coast epic collection, Vision Quest. Totally, totally recommended after the initial first 150 pages, which I was not so particularly enamored by.